Society and healthcare need to find an integrated, holistic approach to this problem. And it has to start with prevention and span intervention. The reason nutrition is an imperative is because it may be the most important of the lifestyle factors and the environmental factors that we can bring to bear on the uh, effort to prevent uh, this disease. Breakthroughs are being made in our understanding of the preventative potential of integrated strategies that do include nutrition. The Finnish Finger study has made some interesting discoveries. It's the first study to show that a multi-domain lifestyle-based intervention can prevent cognitive impairment among elderly persons. The intensive intervention group had four components, physical exercise, diet, cognitive training and management of all vascular and metabolic risk factors. And we could see clearly that after two years, this intensive intervention group had much better cognitive functioning, executive functioning, speed and memory. We know now that for the prevention, we need more focus on the dietary patterns, not only single nutrients. From a public health perspective, we realize that several nutrients are important, including B vitamins, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, and those come from a variety of foods and seem to work best when you eat a healthy diet. And we still, of course, need to refine our knowledge what is exactly the brain-healthy diet. Progress is being made in this area with a new 15-component diet specifically designed for the mind. Three of the um, more distinguishing characteristics of the MIND diet is that um, it requires a daily serving of green leafy vegetables a day, at least twice weekly consumption of berries, and weekly consumption of fish. We have found in um, a study that we recently published that um, high adherence to the MIND diet was successful in reducing the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease by 53%. There is a growing body of research suggesting vitamin D may protect neurons against neurodegenerative mechanisms of Alzheimer's disease. The next stage would be to conduct uh, randomized controlled trials to test the cognitive effect of vitamin D supplements in older adults with cognitive decline and with hypovitaminosis D. Sparking much debate, the recently published Vitacog trial shows there is a powerful case to reappraise the role of vitamins B12, B9 and B6. So we did a, a trial in Oxford where we gave B vitamins to people with cognitive impairment and the B vitamins, including B12, slowed down the shrinkage of the brain and they slowed down cognitive decline. Now we need uh, new and larger trials where we investigate whether uh, B vitamin treatment can also prevent the development of dementia. It's urgent because in the US alone, there are 28 million elderly people who have low normal levels of folate and B12. These people would benefit enormously from being screened for these levels and being given the B vitamins if they really do prevent conversion to dementia. Reduced brain glucose metabolism is always associated with Alzheimer's disease. Discovering how to increase brain glucose utilization is one potential therapeutic target. Part of glucose metabolism is dependent on vitamin B1, which is thiamine. Thiamine isn't a very good drug because if you give it, it just goes up and comes down. But benfotiamine is a very good way to raise thiamine. It's been used in humans already, so it's a very safe compound. And in all of the animal models, it corrects the plaques and tangles and the memory deficits that we associate with Alzheimer's disease. Alternative glucose metabolism strategies are also being explored. The emerging area is, is to use ketone producing supplements uh, to bypass the problem with glucose uptake into the brain. And there are new products and there are new companies that are focused on this and realize that something has to be done really early in the disease and this is, the, this is one potential approach. What's fascinating to see is how there's really consensus about decreased uh, glucose metabolism, for example. And there's a lot of people here who are really trying to unlock that code and we're working together to bring a solution in that field. A new dimension in the early stages of exploration is the relationship between nutrition, the microbiome 
and brain health. Um, what we found is that the brain and the gut communicate and the microbiome within the gut communicate with the brain. So there's a lot of crosstalk and it turns out that what we put in our gut, so what we eat, can actually affect the brain and how it functions. So what we do know now is that some of the beneficial bacteria uh, say in, we see in yogurt or in other probiotics may improve mood. Scientific advances are now being harnessed by pioneering clinics such as the Alzheimer's Prevention Clinic in New York. So I think the tide has turned and I, we have enough evidence to take clinical care of patients. You know, this conference is all about people that have you know, proven that different dietary interventions work in different ways. And what the Alzheimer's Prevention Clinic does is it takes the greatest hits of all this research and applies it clinically. There's no one magic cure for Alzheimer's disease, but we have to start thinking about this because we can reduce risk. And the latest evidence shows that one out of every three cases of Alzheimer's can be prevented. Alzheimer's disease starts 20 to 30 years before in the brain, leaving ample time for us to make brain healthy choices. So based on this concept, we have to to do anything and everything as long as it's evidence-based and safe as early as possible.